A pleasant day to everyone, especially to our honored evaluators, participants, and guests to this 2022 International Research Festival. I am Johnny Dabalos, one of the faculty members here at Davao de Norte State College, and I will be presenting my study entitled Predicting Alzheimer's Disease in MRI Images Using a Modified VGG Convolutional Neural Network Architecture. So as an introduction, Alzheimer's disease is a chronic illness that causes progressive irreversible cognition deterioration, resulting to an inability to perform even the most basic everyday activities, such as difficulties of learning and remembering recent information, communicating such as speaking, reading, and writing, and performing executive functions such as reasoning, decision-making, and planning. The said disease also causes personality and behavioral change, changes. It is the leading cause of dementia, account, accounting to 60 to 80 percent of the cases. And it is the fourth leading cause of death among elderly population in the USA. Contrary to the popular assumption that Alzheimer's disease is not a normal part of aging, the greatest significant factors, however, uh, for the condition is the growing age and the majority of those affected are 65 years old and older. It, the disease affects over 6 million of people in USA alone and its de death toll is estimated to increase 145% from 2000 to 2019 and by 2050, the affected population are projected to rise to 12.7 million. The symptoms of the Alzheimer's disease is are, are, are unnoticeable until late progression. And there is currently new, no cure for the disease. But there is a medicine that can temporarily reduce the symptoms. That's why uh, it is really important to early detect the disease. Physicians use a range of tests to diagnose the disease, such as reviewing of history re records, physical examination, neurological examination, and mental cognitive tests. Brain imaging techniques like MRI are not used to uh, diagnose the disease, but they are used to roll out um, other causes of dementia like symptoms, such as uh, head injury tumors, and some history of stroke. However, as of 2010, the gold standard for diagnosing the disease only ranges from 70.9% to 87.3%. Uh, uh, so, and with the advent of uh, the technology available today, Researchers are, are exploring new and better ways to diagnose the disease, including the use of MRI. So for the general purpose of this study, we are going to detect Alzheimer's disease and its stages on MRI images using deep learning techniques. Particularly, we are going to review some of the literatures that utilizes digital imaging techniques to diagnose the Alzheimer's disease, implement deep learning techniques to identify normal cognitive or normal brain scans or NC, early stages of Alzheimer's disease or AD, mild cognitive impairment or MCI, and late stages of cognitive impairment or LMCI based on MRI images and review the results. So for the methods used for the data acquisitions, we I use the data sets that, that is acquired from the Kaggle machine learning data science community, which are compilation from the Alzheimer's disease neuroimaging uh, initiative or ADLI database. The images are taken in actual view using the 3 dt one magnetic resonance imaging. So these are the sampled image data sets used in the study. So uh, from, the, from the left side of the screen, we have normal cognitive sample for Alzheimer's disease or AD. We also have mild cognitive impairment or MCI and, and M LMCI. So based on Pantano et al. on 1999, the, the Alzheimer's disease is associated with its 
decrease in cerebral volume. So as you can, if we are going to co compare the brain scan, uh, persons with normal cognitive have seemingly have um compact brain. Uh, however, as the disease progresses, as uh, as we notice, there is a, a, a noticeable decrease in cerebral volume. There is also a, 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 a other symptoms of the Alzheimer's disease is the uh, symmetrical or asymmetrical enlargement of the temporal temporal horn. Okay, so in this area, there are changes also. And then subsequent focus or at the top of the, or in in the top of the brain scan, in, in the action, action or in this section, there are changes. So the, the data sets used in this uh, study is around 2,269 MRI scans, uh, which are divided into four categories. We have normal cognitive or NC, early stages of uh, Alzheimer's disease or AD, mild cognitive impairment, and the late uh, stages of cognitive impairment. So the table shown is a distribution of the number of samples used in the study. Actually, the complete data sets available in Kaga community is around 5,121 with an equal distribution of data sets. However, because of the availability of hard hardware resource, so I decided to downsize the uh, sample images to almost equal distribution. So we have NC, 750 Alzheimer's disease or AD 750 and then mild cognitive impairment with which is 717 and 52 available brain scans for uh, late stages of cognitive impairment. So to achieve the study's criteria, I chose to modify the very well-known VGG16 architecture for the experimental setting. Uh, the VGG architecture is or originally consists of a total of 16 layers, and it is a well-known architecture for using 3x3 three three kernel for filter size in each convolution layer with an increasing depth. As we can see in this image or illustration, we have an increasing depth of uh, 64, 128, 256, 512, 512512 and fully connected layer 4096. And for the last layer, we have 1000. Uh, this architecture also requires an input image size of 224 by 224 by 3, and it produces a total uh, parameters of around 133 to 144 million parameters. So to save computational spaces, our com computational space, so I decided to downsize the input size by 32 by 32 by 3, as depicted in this illustration. And then I also employed um, smaller filter size in each convolution layer, but uh, still, the the convolution filters or or the filters are still in increasing size. So I deployed a smaller filter size of eight, sixteen, thirty two, as compared to the VGG original VGG architecture. We have sixteen, uh, sixty four, one two eight, two five six, and two layers of five one two depth. Okay, and The the, uh, the completely connected layers have also been reduced uh, from 4,096 in VGG. As you can see, uh, we reduced the, the fully connected layers into 4, 000, uh, 1,024. And then also the, 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 the strides are not employed in this study. In, in both, both convolutional 
and max pool layers. But dropouts were used to, uh, after the second and third max pool layers to provide regularization. So as a result, the network is downsized to more than 1.6 million parameters. And then for testing the, this algorithm or this modified technique, uh, I adopted a Pareto approach of 80 to 20% splitting. So 80% of the images were used to train the convolutional network while the 20 was used for the validation of the proposed changes. So uh, for the review of the literature, some of the literatures published have a good accuracy, like in Magnet, Magnet et al., they use SVM to, uh, to classify Alzheimer's disease with or healthy brain scans to early, early or brain scans of um, AD or Alzheimer's disease or early stages of Al Alzheimer's disease. They got 94.5 accuracy rate. Payan et al., as you can see, uh, published in 2015, they CNN, and then they use three-way classification, up to three-way classification, and their result it is quite good. They got 89.47%. Um, for this study, uh, I use CNN, uh, Modified VGG Architecture, so I got 96.93% for four-way classification, and these are the results for three-way and two-way classification. So, in conclusion, we reviewed some of the uh, literatures that uses MRI scans in predicting Alzheimer's disease. And then we, we also designed deep learning models to predict Alzheimer's disease and its stages, and we gained promising results. So for the recomm recommendation for future improvement, um, uh, it is recommended to use more advanced computer hardware because uh, we need to increase the number of data sets. If possible, we could use the complete data sets available in the community. And then second is to analyze the effect of the imbalanced data set in the network because uh, this network is just um, a proposed one. So we also, I, I haven't still tested it with other data sets, of course. And then, of course, the since the data sets employed in my study are almost have the same, they almost have the same sizes so they they could uh, affect the performance of the network. So that ends my presentation. Thank you so much for listening and have a good day.